Well, hey there, everybody. How you doing? Dave Fenoy here. Another Wednesday, another Ask Dave Fenoy Anything. It is 6 p.m. Pacific, and we are on Facebook Live. Love to uh, see who's there. Just, you know, send a little love or a little something, an emoji face, a hello, um, because, hey, I want to know you're out there. Uh, got a great buddy of mine coming up in just a little bit, but I want to remind you that all these Ask Dave Fenoy Anythings live on my YouTube channel, Dave Fenoy VoiceOver Training. If you're interested in doing some uh, private coaching with me or just want to know what's going on in the world of Dave Fenoy and coaching and conventions and whatnot, uh, you can sign up at... Uh, DaveFenoy.com and I promise I will not be sending you lots of things trying to get you to buy lots of things. Well, I want to introduce you to a very good friend of mine. Uh, we have known each other for a while and his son Dino and Connor Andrade and there they are. Woo -hoo! Hello, 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 Dave. Hello, Dave. Uh, hell, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry. The cuteness factor is just too strong here. <laughs> I'm going to put on my headphones just in case somebody's getting some feedback. Uh, it is so good to see you, my friend. It's good to see you, too. It, it, it's been a little while, you know, with, with COVID separating all of us, mm. uh, you know, not, uh, not all recording in the same studio as often anymore. Yeah. And, uh, and then we keep missing each other with uh, the conventions because I, I, I finally got back to Dragon Con and you weren't there. You I, were at a I was at convention. a different con. I was at a different convention. But you know what? And probably going to it's going to come back to bite me in the butt at some point but Dragon Con is my favorite con. Yeah, yeah, mine too. Mine too. And and uh I'll, Connor's never been there. I'm hoping to take him next year, but Connor was actually uh one of the guests at this year's San Diego Comic Con. Whoa. So so yeah, he was on the uh We Baby Bears panel. Uh well actually it was a We Baby Bears panel. It was Cartoon Network panel where they, they pitted casts of uh, Craig of the Creek, um, Teen Titans, uh, and We Baby Bears against each other in a game <laughs> show format. Uh, and the We Baby Bears won. Well, <laughs> so, clearly that had to be because Connor was on the team. Yeah, it was it was, it was was a good time. Uh, uh, Connor, what, what was that like for you? It was really fun. We like had to hit this button to um, uh, answer the question right and you mean just yeah. like a regular game show? Yeah, but the funny thing was when we won, we got to keep the got, we got to keep the buttons. Ah! We the team, me, um, and the two other cast members, the main cast from We Baby Bears. Uh, Amari McCoy and, and Max Mitchell. And Max Mitchell. Okay. And we all got to keep the buttons. So there was you... only one button on our team, and um, I'm like, so Amari, did, did, so um, you didn't Amari, get the button. Well, I got the button, but Amari got the button we actually used. Ah. I did, me and Max, uh, we both got the buttons from the other teams. So I, I don't know if you're like me, but back behind me and in my booth over here, uh, I've got all kind of paraphernalia and pictures and trophies and awards and whatnot from my career. So is that the first, is that the beginning of your uh, trophy collection? Maybe. Uh, kind of. Uh, one of the big things that Connor did uh, a while ago, uh, directed by Colette Sunderman, which was wonderful, was he got to be a uh, toddler Groot for Spider-Man Maximum Venom. So we do have a lot of, of Groot statues. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so as as uh, baby Groot there, or Spider-Man Groot, uh, did you remember your lines? Yes. Go ahead. Well, yeah, go, go ahead. Oh, no, right now. Oh. Go for it. Hmm. I don't know. This is kind of complicated. I don't know if I remember. Go ahead, son. <laughs> oh, I know it. I am Groot. There, there you, you go. go. <laughs> there you go. And what, did, what, what, what did Venom Groot sound like? What was the monster sound? Oh, yeah. Um, the monster sound. I can do It's weird. Okay, just listen. <laughs> I love it. I love it. 
All right. And, we're... And, and this is why when we started, it was I'm voice actor Dino Andrade, and this is Dino Andrade's son. Now it's this is voice actor Connor Andrade, and I'm Connor Andrade's dad. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like the, uh, the 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 Michael Douglas thing. Um, oh God. Anyway, we'll forget about that. Let's get back to <laughs> this and you. Dino, for just a minute, I mm -hmm. want to back up. How did you get your career started? What what brought you into voiceover? Uh, well, to begin with, a, a, a fanatical love of movies all my life. Ever since I was little, movies were magic. Uh, I mean, to this day, movie theaters are sacred places. They're like, they're my churches, you know. Uh, it, the, it, I, I have always loved film, and in particular, um, great works of imagination, science fiction, horror, fantasy, animation, all of these things. Uh, and I, I started to hit that age, that, that magical age, uh, where I began to realize these weren't just made up things on the screen, those were people playing those parts, you know? And I, be, I began to ask, you know, who is Charles Lawton? Who is Albert Finney? Who is Peter Falk? Who is Roddy McDowell? Who is, you know, all these people who were in all of these roles that just made me go, wow, you know, uh, uh, who was Boris Karloff? Who, you know, who was, you know, all of these people. And I, I wanted to know who they were. I want to know who was Humphrey Bogart. And, and more and more I got into that whole idea of, of, of being an actor. Uh, and so in school, I got into a lot of plays. Uh, and then I came to, uh, then I, I came here to Los Angeles, uh, where I immediately uh, got into college and started studying. Uh, my main study was film history. I was, <laughs> my main, of course, he's going to steal all the time. My main study was film history and uh, as, as well as film and, uh, uh, and my in was through sound work. I started uh, working for uh, a post-production sound company, it was uh, Writer Sound Services, uh, and I was uh, actually learning Foley work, where you're doing sound effects oh, yeah, in the background. Yeah. And uh, one of the films that I was working on was the Steve Miner horror film House in uh, 1984, we were working on it. And I wound up doing some voices on that, these uh, these little critters. They're like, <laughs> and in that, became my in was through voiceover and then that led into getting into uh on camera work uh i started doing a lot of training i went through the the groundlings program i was being trained in in meisner technique under judith weston uh i before i knew it i, I had an agent i was doing commercials for mcdonald's uh, delta airlines i did uh, guest appearances on a on a a Sharon Glass TV show called uh, The Trials of Rosie O'Neill. I did some episodes. Oh, yes, of that a, one lasted about that yeah, long. Yeah, that long, yeah. Uh, a, a, a Saturday morning show called Hulk Hogan's Rockin' Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I did uh, some episodes of that. Um, I was doing a bunch of stuff. Um, and then in the 90s, I, I kind of made a changeover from uh, from acting to filmmaking, because I was always that guy who was like, well, what I really want to do is direct. And that was at the time when I, 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 I'd been uh, in a relationship, I started a relationship with the late, great Mary Kay Bergman, uh, which of course we, we eventually got married. And when I was making the transition from actor to filmmaker, she was making the transition from, you know, working stiff to I want to be a voice actor ah. and so she caught the tail end of the first part of my acting career and then was there for the whole filmmaking and even though she was incredibly supportive of the 10 years I was pursuing filmmaking she knew and could see how soul crushing it was because 90% of what I was doing <clears throat> was trying to get money yeah. you know instead of creating art and it was it was killing me and she always wanted me to return to acting she always did uh she would get figurines every time i would imitate a character or something to kind of try and get me into it like you know i would do daffy duck you know, you're despicable right next thing i know she's got a D daffy duck figurine for me you know trying very much to get me to, to go back to it after she passed um i was 
basically a lost human being for a number of years. Uh, and then I decided it was time to get back into the business. And I thought since the last thing I was doing was filmmaking, uh, maybe I could try writing. And I heard that there was a show, uh, I believe it was called Vampire Princess, an anime show that was looking for writers. And I was given a phone number. I contacted what I thought was the producers. I, have, I wound up reaching somebody uh, uh, else in the production company who was connected to a show called Saint Tail. And they thought I was calling to set up an audition. <laughs> and, uh, and when I said, I said, yes, that's what I'm doing. So I auditioned and I got a part on the show. And I thought, okay, I, okay, Mary Kay, I got the message. And two, two and things so, there. Yeah, say, so say, went, say yes. Uh huh. And you don't know how your blessing is coming. You don't know. You do not know. So <laughs> I rededicated myself at that point to to being an actor. I went. I went back. I did not rely on the fact that I had already done all this training at the Groundlings and Meisner and so on, because that had been ten years previous. So I went back to training. And I, I was uh, I trained with 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 uh, Jenny McSwain, Susan Blue, Bob Bergen, all these wonderful wonderful people. Um, as I'm trying to get my head back in shape after you know what I'd gone through with all that, uh, and I I've been an actor ever since. And you know, and Mary Kay was right. She was absolutely right. Uh, and then. X number of years later, I run into uh, my ex high school sweetheart I hadn't seen in 27 years. And uh, she was the one that actually stepped into my life, my Casey, and mended what was still my shattered heart and my still messed up head from the loss of Mary Kay. And uh, we wound up, we had Connor. We had Connor, and in <laughs> fact, uh, Casey and I did not get married right away because you know, there was a lot of estate issues having to do with Mary Kay and so on. We finally did get married, and when we did, Connor was my best man. Aww. And we got, we got married on Halloween. So wait, 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 wait. Con Connor, up. did you wear a tux? No, I wore a bat Lego Batman costume because it was yep. Halloween and I was like eight. You know, yep. what was I thinking? Of course, yep. that makes perfect sense. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, yes. Casey well, and I were in full Irish Gothic, lots of purple and black. And then there was Lego yeah, be, because and Lego and Lego because was Andrade is name. is such an Irish name. Well, you know, <laughs> what, Casey Keeney. What can you say? There. There's what can you say? Okay, now, PC. so Dino, I, we, now we got yeah. your story, mm -hmm. but Connor. How did you get into voiceover? I know you probably had a little bit of help from your dad. Um, what, what, how did he get you going? Well, there was this um, French thing, was it? Yeah, it was uh, called Sam Sam. They made the cartoon and then like, you can watch it on YouTube. It was like, uh, then they made it in English. And so they made a movie about it. New people are here. I'm looking up the viewer count. Anyway, as I was saying, New Sam Sam thing, whatever, and then they made a movie on it. And Dad was the big bad guy. He was this Martian. Yes, I was. Dude. I was the bad guy in the booth. Same and thing. so I just decided, uh, we just decided that I would audition for the uh, character of the Martian's kid, who's actually the friend of the main character. So, and so wait, whoa, 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 whoa. So uh, was this your idea or your dad's idea? Yeah, no, this was the idea of the producers and director who had worked with me on a previous film um, that I did that was also released in Europe, a film called Spices that I did with Kirk Thornton. Wonderful, wonderful guy. And I know Kirk. Uh, yeah, Kirk, yeah. So we, we did that movie, and they were telling me that they wanted to do this other film, Sam Sam, and they were considering me for the villain, and they had seen... Uh, a number of uh, playful videos that I had made, jokey videos that I'd made with Connor on YouTube. Ah. And they asked me at the spicy session, we're going to be doing this thing called Sam Sam. Would you be okay with Connor auditioning for a part in the movie? And <laughs> That and and that, that's how that that's how that happened. I asked Connor, "Do you would you be okay with that idea?" And uh, he was. Any audition, and and we, uh, I asked uh, uh, Atlas Talent um, if they would represent Connor for this if, if they got it. And they said yes, but understand that this would be just a um, this would be a favor to you. 
he would not be an official client of Atlas. He would just be a uh, you know, freelancer. And at the audition, he had his callback for Sam Sam. I recorded the callback, and they were having him do all kinds of extraordinary things in the callback. And I sent the video to the agents. So the agents <laughs> sent Connor more auditions for Super Wings, a Google campaign, a couple more things. And Connor did something I had. I have never seen, it's never happened to me, I don't know anybody else that happened, but it, he got the super wing things and then continued, he booked six gigs in six weeks. Wow. And next thing you know, Atlas is there saying, here's the contract. <laughs> please the please don't go anyplace else. <laughs> yeah. Le and keep this why. kid here. <laughs> yeah, and so, so, you know, so from Connor's perspective, you know, it was like, Dad asked if I wanted to be in a movie, so I auditioned, you know. But, yeah, it all it all came about because, funnily enough, because of a bunch of goofy videos we had on 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 Facebook. Yeah. That, well, uh, 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 Connor, let, let me ask you a couple of questions here about that. Yeah. Do you love doing this? Yes. It's amazing. It's voice acting. I can look at the TV, and then there's me sitting there, right there. Look at him. <laughs> you know, because there, there's a thing in Hollywood sometimes that parents really want their kids to be actors. Very often it's the parent that thought about doing it but never was able to. And they force them right. and they push them and kids, okay, I don't want to do this. But uh, yeah. you seem like you are a fish in your favorite water. <laughs> Just Well, we, I try to create an environment for that by being very picky about what he auditions for and how often he works. Because what, I mean, as soon as like word got out, you know, there's there's this, you know, nine year old kid who can act, everybody and their brother, it was like, I would get all these, in, all these independent producers of tiny shows and video games were like, hi, so-and-so gave me your number. We'd like to know if your kid, and I just knew this is gonna burn Connor out. Yeah. And so I had a I had a sit down uh, uh, with uh, with Heather over at Atlas, uh, and um, and it was she was completely open to yeah let's let's limit you know let's decide what he's going to do and what he's not going to do, uh, and and so we we've, we've kept that that lightness and and now it's it's very much a necessity because he's doing he, you know he's he's starring in all these shows. Uh, he's got his auditions. I have my shows. I have my auditions. Then he's also got school and homework. And so that is, is was going to be that was going to be my next question. How do you balance all that, Connor? Your your school and your work. Um, I try. <laughs> I have to leave from school um, a few days back, and now I have this giant pile of math homework. Oh. I was so not. He, I was not a fan of math when I was in school. History, <laughs> English, all that stuff. Great. The humanities, math. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that was that, me too. That was me too. Yeah. It was. It was. It was pure artist. It was like, but one plus one always equals two. I want something interpreted. You know. Uh, I, I was. I was never good at it. But we we help him out as as best we can because you know. Uh, you know, it's it's the law. He doesn't get good grades. He doesn't get a work permit. So there's no. Well, oh, he's an not, actor. Not just your law. Work. Not just yeah. your law. The law. The law. And, yeah. And, and yeah. when you say and good it, grades, is that uh, C plus and above or B? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got to have he's got to have passing grades on everything, or he doesn't get his work permit. And and he how many grades. hours uh, is he allowed to work? You know, it varies. It varies on the job. It varies on the job. Um, it, he, he's not an on-camera actor. We, we're not really, we've never been interested in, in him doing, you know, on camera, especially since I can't really keep an eye on him, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I can keep an eye on him by keeping him in the world of voiceover. In fact, uh, we do 90% of our work from this booth right behind us, and I'm the one on the other side of the door here uh, handling, um, my side of the engineering 
you know so so i i and i'm with him at every single session you know and i i couldn't do that if it was if it was okay. on camera i and this um, is a crazy question but i how often you know what do you have your own high chair or do, do you have a table that goes up and down how do you how do you handle oh, the height you difference something. between I'll you two? I'll show you something sneaky. If you look up, can you see the boom arm? Oh, yeah, that'll come way down. That is, yeah, yeah, that is actually three telescoping boom arms that I just connected end to end to end so that I can maneuver it in all kinds of different positions to suit my height and Connor's. That was not designed that way. I just looked for boom arms that would connect to, you know, a tabletop arm or something. I connected the tabletop arm to the ceiling of the booth, so it can telescope in three different directions. Okay. Well, and let me and let's that, you know this this is perfect. Uh, and before I go into this, I'm just going to say I know our listeners, our viewers have some questions. Sure. Please go ahead and write your questions. I'll try to monitor them and and bring some on uh, because I know there's some things you would like to ask or comments you would like to make. And we definitely want to share those. But while we're talking about equipment and booths and whatnot, mm -hmm. yours looks like a well-worn booth. Is that a whisper? It is. It's over twenty years old. Yeah, yeah. It's well over twenty years old. I've uh, uh, I've had this particular booth for about twelve years now, and I bought it used. Um, back I built then. this. <laughs> you, oh, you built that yourself? I built that myself. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, yeah. My my great grandfather used to have a, uh, a a wood shop in his in his backyard. Uh, this, this this giant area full of tools and stuff. And I used to get together with him and badly make things. And I never forgot just enough skill to be dangerous. That's kind of uh, me. My yeah. my grandfather was a carpenter. My on my father's side was a carpenter and contractor. And uh, my father who became a veterinarian doctor, and uh, he would not work on anything because he had worked on so much stuff with his dad. And since he was a doctor, it was like, you know what? I don't do that anymore. I hire people to do that. Um, yeah, yeah, but I, I built this, but I've had people say, oh, awesome, what do you charge? Like, no. No, no, it's for me. I just, yeah, just do it for me. <laughs> no. I can live with my mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be upset with me because I'm gonna make you pay me money. It's like uh, yeah, all oh, the amount of trial and error. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, all right. Well, yeah. what what's your interface? Uh, my interface, um, I use a Scarlet Two I Four, and okay. that is chained through a DBX Two Eighty Six originally A, and now a DBX Two Eighty Six S. And I just want to point out that is not the most expensive equipment in the world by any means. No. No, it is not. But boy, does it do the trick. Yes, it does. It absolutely does the trick. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's proof, once again, that you don't have to spend a fortune to have decent sound. Uh, people ask me what interface they should get. I go, well, it's uh, the uh, 2i2. I have recommended for a long time. I've added to it the uh, UA Volt 1 or 2. Uh, same price range. Um, and every bit is good. Yeah. Yeah, what, yeah. What's your What's I, your I, microphone? I the mic is a Neumann TLM one hundred and seven. Um, ah, I, I a one hundred and seven or a one hundred and seventy. Uh, one hundred and seven. One hundred and seven. Um, the uh, originally what I had and, and used for many, 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 many years was a Studio Project C one. Uh, I love that mic. Uh, uh I, if I'm not mistaken, it was. Um, was recommended to me by you the gears grinding. I know the year gears grinding the hamster and the hamster it's, wheel going squeaky, 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 squeaky. oh well anyway um, I bought that mic it only cost like I think believe it was 200 bucks at, at Sweetwater and the sound is so good and people kept telling me that oh yeah at our studio that's our backup mic you know and it was like that's, that's a great mic and it has been a wonderful mic. And then when the pandemic hit, as you well know, yeah. somebody got it in their head, you know, that everybody needed to have a, 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 a Neumann, you know, U87. They would say, please make sure that you've got a, a, a condenser mic, a, a U87 or equivalent. And every time I said, I have a Studio Project C1, it was like, oh, that's nice. 
despite the fact it sounds yeah, amazing, yeah. you know. Uh, so I, I, I thought, well, he's, he's working his tail off. I'm working my tail off. Cause when the pandemic hit, it was like, yes, we have a booth. We're all set up. I, I do jobs from home all the time. We were ready to rock. And so we were flooded with auditions and work. It was like, you know what? I'm just going to drop it on here. And, and I, I, I got hold of a friend of mine who, uh, has won Emmys for sound and so on and asked them about mics. And he was saying that, yes, the U87 is a magnificent mic, but it's also kind of a Swiss army knife for everything from voices to instruments and so on. But the TLM 107 is really designed for pure voice. You know, you're, you're, you're going to, you're going to make me look at that, uh, 107. I kind of collect them and I, I don't know why other than I like having them. Uh, but 99% of the time, well, 95% of the time I'm on my 416, uh, but I have a 103 that I can push a button and suddenly that's the one that's working, but yeah, I have a U87. Yeah. The 107 is great. It's got all the, it's got all the pattern settings and all those things that the 103 doesn't have. And, and again, it was really designed specifically for voice. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I, 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 I love that mic. I love that mic. But you know, there's still folks who are like, oh, you don't have any ladies. Yeah, I know. I know. But they're, they're, U87 is like a big room. Uh, and in a big studio, they do very well and they will work across a lot of instruments and situations uh, where the 103, the 416, and obviously uh, your 107 uh, mm-hmm. is doing just what it needs to do. Just what it needs to we've, do. Exactly. We've got some comments and questions. Sure. Uh, Terry Briscoe says, Connor. What is your favorite type of character? What are your favorite type of characters to do? You, you, you know, your the is and characters are characters is character. Okay, and my mother was a reading specialist, and I've never gotten over, uh, you know, grammar. <laughs> Sorry, my Terry. mother was a migrant farmer, so she's just pretty much in awe of all this. Nico, they pay you to do this? Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> All right, so Connor, what's your favorite type of? What are your favorite type of characters to do? Um, I do like uh playing characters that are very energetic and cartoony and stuff. Cause I mean, come on, who wants? Who doesn't want to have their head go huge when they scream or whatever? Well, so you, you like energy because you have energy. <laughs> ah! Got another question here, Grace Newton. Connor, do you have any favorite voice actor idols or people you aspire to work with? Um, well, no, but I do have a lot of shows I would like to work on. Like, um, I would like to be on Star Trek. Uh, but any people I'd like to be with? You can say I Dave Fennoy. Say Dave Fennoy. Because there was this one guy. Remember his last name? <laughs> first name was Dave. I can't remember his last name. What was it, Dad? Do you remember? <laughs> oh yeah, that guy, Fanoa, yeah. I love this kid. I love this kid. <laughs> oh, um, let's see. Uh, okay, that was who to work with. Let's see. LOL. Uh, I have those hamsters too. That was from a conversation a little while ago. Hello, uh, Karen. An old dear friend of mine that I've known since the 80s, Talia Trigros. Uh, do either of you work in Spanish? And Talia is one of the world's greatest uh, radio personalities. Uh, knew her and worked with her up in Northern California for years. And as she moved down here, she was a fixture on the wave forever uh, and just a great human being. Enough of that. Uh, do either of you do any work in Spanish? No, I've done some work where I have to like say some Spanish words, um, and I've done work where I have to do accents, mm-hmm. but I haven't actually like learned and, like fluent and Spanish. I've got a funny story about the accents, but <laughs> to answer the question first, no, no, uh, we, we've not done any work in Spanish. Uh, uh, I would love it if Connor in school would 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 pick up Spanish. Um, it's, it's always been kind of a difficult thing for me. I was, uh, I was born on an air force base. We hopped bases across the country. 
uh, this was during the Vietnam era. I'm way older than, than anybody knows. I mean, his siblings are in their 30s. Uh, I, I was born in 63. And our parents were born in the 40s and went through a lot of serious, uh, serious bigotry, prejudice. They, they went through a lot of, uh, of stuff. And so it was very much in our household. Uh, um, no, you are you are going to be integrated because we don't want you to go through the hell we went through because they they spent their youth before the civil rights movement and it was it was hell for them. Uh, so Spanish was not spoken. Our, so for a lot of uh, Mexican Americans uh, who are my age, I mean, I'm I'm going to be 59 years old in two days. Uh, a lot of us we call ourselves lost generation because we're in that gap of parents who went through hell and said no. And so I've always had a difficulty to pick up the language. Uh, and, and in fact, a lot of my, my uh, growth was done in Trenton, New Jersey, off of bases there, which is why when I get a little tired, I tend to sound like I'm from the East Coast. I meet people from the East Coast all the time who are like, I can tell you're from the East, but I can't tell where. Where? So you know, so do, it, do, you, uh, do you work in a, in a Joy Z accent at all? Sometimes, yeah. Most of the, um, uh, the, a lot of the World War II Call of Duty games, uh, a lot of the guys, a lot of GIs that you hear that sound like they're from Brooklyn. A lot of them are actually a five foot four Mexican from Los Angeles. Yeah, <laughs> but that's, it was just me falling back on all those people that I grew up with because I was born on a base here, and then during the Vietnam years we were transferred over there, and then we bounced around. And you know, quite frankly, there just you know there wasn't a lot of call. It, it's yeah, I, again, we call ourselves lost generation, and I've I've tried to pick it up. It's 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 a difficult thing. Just the other day, I was looking into more to try and, and get back into the languages. It is, it is a beautiful language and I, I wish I had it all. But uh, you know, I work on the accents all the time. Uh, uh, you know, I, I mean, there's also, there is also some uh, uh, native blood in there as well. I'm, I'm, I'm also part Yaqui Indian, you know, so there's a lot, there's a lot of that, that in there. But the, it, again, it has a lot to do with the time. Yeah, yeah. That, that I was born, I mean, I lost, I lost a grandmother um, before I was born, my, my mother lost her mother because she was denied health care. Uh, you know, there was a, there was a, it was it was a really bad time. You know? Yeah. Uh, Talia <laughs> left this comment about that. Yes, that story is very common among many of us. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, I want to bring up something that might be a little controversial. I noticed on your resume <laughs> that you played Spe uh, Speedy Gonzalez. Yes. Now, yes. I remember yes. watching Speedy Gonzalez uh, back in the day when I was a kid, and mm -hmm. somewhere along the way, uh, Speedy Gonzalez became politically incorrect. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. And and quite frankly, it's, it's, it's a little too bad. I mean, growing up Mexican-American uh, uh, and growing up in the, in the 60s and into the 70s, when you turn on the TV, the only uh, Mexican characters that you saw in animation were either the the Frito Bandido stealing all your Fritos, right? <laughs> yes. Or or you know, or the goofy little sidekick, right? You know. Yeah. But Speedy was the hero. And not only was he a hero for those of us born in that era, he was also recognizable. Because there was a character actor. He was he was the first major Mexican American character actor from uh, from the 50s into the 60s, he did a lot of westerns, particularly uh, a lot of John Wayne films. You can look him up. His name was Jose Gonzalez Gonzalez. Mm. And that is his voice. That is when Mel Brooks was doing Speedy Gonzalez. He was doing an impression, a dead on impression of Jose Gonzalez Gonzalez. And if you get pictures of the two of them side by side, Speedy looks exactly like Jose, right? And so here was a guy that we looked up to on, on in movies because here we were seeing ourselves on the screen and now here's an animated character that was based on him and he's the hero. We, I, I loved Speedy, we loved Speedy. And when I had that chance to audition, it was, oh, I worked so hard on it, so hard on it. And I, I celebrated when I got the part and, and then we only, we did, we did it only for a limited amount of time because because yeah, there were there were folks who were afraid that it was going to be considered offensive. And it's like, 
you know, look into the history. Look into the history. He was the hero. And and I, I still feel that way. I, I still do. And it was it was an honor to play that character. All um, right. Got another one here for you. A uh, question for Dave and Dino. Recently, I've, I've experienced mic awareness for the first time. Uh, she probably just walked into the booth and never noticed a mic was there. No, no, bad joke. Uh, what's your best tip for combating that? Uh, and I think by mic awareness, she means I'm paying attention to the mic uh, more, you know, oh, where's the mic? It's there. I'm pay it's it's kind of like paying attention to the camera when you're on camera, which you, you need to really forget the mic is there. And right. at the same time, know how to work it. Right. Right. Um, I don't know if that's something Connor's ever thought about because right now, I Connor... I didn't know what mic awareness was. Yeah, Connor, Connor is at that age... He is at that beautiful age where, you know, like a kid is wearing an incredible Hulk shirt. You say, okay, be the Hulk. And the kid goes, you know, here, be the Hulk. Arr! Yeah, they don't think, okay. Let <laughs> and me the shirt is green. It fits. Banner and so on. Yeah, you know, they, they don't do any of that. But for me, my thing is, is I'm very, very, I, I'm very, very big on the concept of visualization. I am using it constantly, whether I'm auditioning, whether I'm doing a job. I'm using visualization in a big way because I'm, I know that as an actor in voiceover, I don't have many of the things. I mean, if you go to any of the big schools, you go to, you know, you go to the schools, uh, any of the major schools of internalized acting, the schools of Stella Adler, Sanford Meisner, where I went to, you know, Lee Strasberg, all of these, and you ask the teachers what is the most important element of all good acting, a large percentage of them will look at you and say listening because it's not a ping pong match it's not your line my line your line my line it's listen respond right and here's this thing we voice actors are often denied because we're recording by ourselves often you denied know? almost yeah. always denied yeah I, yeah and I, even when we have a reader they're a reader they're not giving us the performance the yeah. other actor would give you know and and we don't have any of those other things that inform our performances we're, we're not on sets we don't wear costumes we don't carry props we're not wearing makeup <laughs> even if you're playing an x-wing pilot in a star wars movie you know the x-wing isn't real but you're still in a flight suit yeah you still get the blinky buttons you know you got you have all these things that help inform. we have nothing but our imaginations so I rely very heavily on visualizing where I'm at, who I'm talking to, what the situation is, the, all that visual stuff, and make the booth go away. And so I you guess know, that's you how are, I'm doing, you, I really you, think about that. You are so preaching to the choir with uh, students of mine when I say, well, first of all, acting is reacting. So that listening, what, what was just said or done. So I, I've got hand signals. What just happened that you're responding to? What are you thinking, feeling, doing? Who are you talking to? What's that relationship? The words are only important and they give detail of that. So you got to create all those other things uh, that the on-camera or the on-stage actor has that we don't. Right. Boy, yeah, there we go. Arr, preach. Right. Uh, right, right. Okay. You have to do it quickly. There was, I, wait, there was, wait, wait. Uh, there, was a, there was a guy who told me once who had, had, had said they, he called it, uh, and I've never forgotten this. It's become a mainstay to me that he called it instant acting. It was a guy named Fenoy, I think, who told me that at <laughs> a convention. And I've taken that to heart, and I've, I've never forgotten it. And that is it. It's instant acting, and that's one of my major tools for that is the visualization. Someday I'm going to thank this Fenoy guy if I ever run into him. <laughs> <laughs> And and by the way, I'll just bring that up. We met at Dragon Con yes. lo these many years ago, and it was in instant friendship. Yes, yes, it was. It was also an exercise in instant acting because we were uh, supposed to host a costume contest for World oh. of Warcraft, and so they assumed you and I knew each other. Yes, and when we met. <laughs> On stage, about to do the show, um, I said, hi, I'm Dino Andrade. He said, hi, I'm Dave Fenoy. We shook hands. And our handler about had a heart attack. They were like, oh, my God, you don't know each other? You're on in two minutes. And both of us were like, we got this. Yeah, we got this. We got this. Uh, that and we did this show like you and I had known each other for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, 
so often in this business, especially uh, in voiceover, people who I meet who have a successful career, I feel a kinship for. I, I know what you went through. I know, I feel things that you feel. Uh, oops, somebody turned the lights up. I, oh, I feel like I, I, I know you because we have gone on a similar journey. Um, and plus, you know, you're just a likable guy. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I try. I have people in my family who are teachers, who are scientists, who uh, who raise kids uh, uh, under extremely difficult circumstances, uh, people in my family who are combat veterans. I, 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 I have, my sister is a pediatric nurse. I've never had to take care of people who, you know, kids who may be sick or dying. I, I didn't like, like my great uncle, you know, get shot on D-Day by German machine guns. Mm. I, you know, I, I don't, I, I, I I, I haven't had the education of children in, in my hands. I'm just a guy who plays pretend for a living. It, well, you know, a, Dino, I'm going to tell you, it's more important than uh, we think it is. Uh, I come from a family of educators and doctors, uh, and I'm kind of the black sheep of the family in so many ways because I went the arty route. And I always thought I was just having fun doing what I'm doing with my career, until I started going to conventions and meeting fans whose lives you touched in ways you could not have imagined. Uh, sure. And for some wild reason, you've made a difference in their life. Yes, I believe in that absolutely. I'm Where, where I'm coming from is I'm just not one of those people that are like, treat me special because yeah. I do the voices in your cartoons. No. But no, I absolutely get that. I mean, one of the most special uh, one of the most special experiences, I, I will never forget it. I did a convention called BioCon uh, in the Louisiana Bayou. And I, I went to, to BioCon and I was there and there was a kid who was wearing a Batman t-shirt and Arkham Asylum had just come out and I was, the scare, I'm the scarecrow in that. And, and, uh, and I see the t-shirt and, and, I, I, and he's just standing there, just very quietly standing there and I wave him over. And I said, "Come, come, come, come on, come on over." And I said, "I said, hi. Do you know who I am?" And he looked at me and he said, "You are Nino and Ronnie." I was like, "Oh, my heart!" You know. And it was like, "What would you like to know about the making of that game?" I will, you know. And I spent, I spent like an hour and a half just answering every question he wanted. And even, even later, I'm talking to other guests, and he's by there, and he's on the phone. He's like, "I was just." talking to and like and I was practically in tears he was so so happy so happy and at the same time there's also all of those wonderful moments when I've met other uh, 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 other folks who are you know fellow Latinos who are, are proud <laughs> that I was the scarecrow yeah. Yeah. and all these other characters and that that has a great great deal of meaning to me as well that's you know to, to be a role model in those areas that's 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 amazing uh, so yeah, I absolutely agree with you. But what I don't do, I, as, as I said, is I don't go around treat me special. Yeah. You know, like, well, you know, you, you can't believe uh, your press, the best of it or the worst of it. Um, when you poop, it stinks. You always have to. Rem <laughs> you have to remember your humanity. Terry yeah. Briscoe back. I think I have my grammar correct on this statement, Dave. Okay, we'll we'll uh, arm wrestle about it later. In the military, they used to call all the Hispanic recruits Speedy Gonzalez. I got in big trouble when I called them out on it. I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, but you did the right thing. You did the right thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jeremy Adams. Oh, he looks like a hey, microphone. microphone. Hi, I've been. Microphone. <laughs> I've been hearing conflicting information lately. Some are telling me don't do any post-processing for auditions. Others are telling me no, send it raw. Uh, they want to hear your sound. What has been your experience? What have what have what have been your experiences? Uh, I do some uh, light processing with a DBX two eighty six A in order to you know cut background sound and uh, uh, level out uh, the uh, the the auditions. Um, 
And the only time that I don't use any processing is when I'm doing a job. Or the because they're going to do it on their end. They're going to do it on their end. Yeah. Or uh, the audition copy itself says, do no processing. Yeah. Now, this doesn't seem to be a problem because most of the time, if you book that job, uh, they're going to ask you, can we do a test of your booth? Yeah. yeah. And that's when they're going to hear the raw sound anyway. And, uh, and the key word you used was light. Uh, I have yeah. worked with people before who uh, they probably didn't feel like their voice was enough. So they're compressing it too much. They're equalizing yeah. it too much. Uh, and what you want to do is have just enough that it sounds real mm -hmm. um, and, and fix any flaws. It's kind of like a girdle for your sound. Um, or spanks for your sound. Nobody wears a girdle anymore. <laughs> uh, but you you don't want it to be noticeable. All right, right. let's see. Uh, let's jump into a few more here. Uh, Michael Glover, the little chihuahua for Taco Bell. That was Carlos Alizraki. Yes, it was. Uh, Carlos. They cut for mm -hmm. politically incorrect. Um, ah, to lie again, visualization. Good. And let's see. That's been my secret weapon since 1985. <laughs> uh, Cameron McEwen, uh, the both of you ought to reprise your roles in the World of Warcraft animated TV series. Are they making an animated TV series? I was not aware of that. <laughs> I was not aware of that either. I did not know there was. Well, you know, I've I, been in the cast of Warcraft for about 14 years. Which I think yeah, we've been, been, been on that game well about too. the same amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I have a bone to pick with Blizzard and World of Warcraft. When they made the movie, they should have just used the actors from the game. Done, have it look exactly like what they had. It was wonderful, and they would have had a built-in audience, and that movie would have made kazillions. Yep, I could not agree with you more. That uh, that really pissed me off. Um, let's see, Terry, I heard of this Fenoy guy, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard he's wonderful. Uh, oh, okay, I met that Fenoy guy. I should pre-read these. Um, um, yeah, you can. I'm Ah, uh, we better we better get back to English here. We we might lose our audience. We actually started we actually started doing this because I did a, a game called Star Blood Arena where I had to speak in in alien gibberish, and I asked Connor to help me with it, and he picked it up. It was one of the first times I realized this kid might be an actor, you know, because he just picked right up on it. And that's that's that kind of gibberish is the kind of thing I've I've done. If you saw the movie, uh, if you saw Dune in the Salusa Secunda sequence where uh, there's the throat singer uh, singing in, 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 in the, the, the secundan language and so on. Uh, that was done by singer Michael Geiger. Uh, and Hans Zimmer asked him to sing uh, in, in alien gibberish, basically. And then they would pepper in specific words like Harkonnen and some of these things. Uh, but he did not know how to do that. So he, it was decided to hire uh, someone to come in and coach him on singing in uh, gibberish. I'm the guy they hired. Oh, bravo. Yeah. So you are officially a consultant. <laughs> yes, I'm officially a consultant, yes. Hey Dad, I have homework to do, and yes. I have officially done the alien gibberish bit that we always do live on camera. So, I must go. Well, 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 go back to homework. Dino, go do your homework, man. It was yeah, a you pleasure. Got you got me for the last 10 minutes or so. Yeah. I may occasionally pop in, though.
He probably will <laughs> he jump probably in. Will. Talk about you, jump in. you know, um, he is such a delightful young man. Oh, I, I, I honestly feel that there's just two things that really have happened since since Connor was born. Uh, one is I, I feel like I'm raising my best friend, you know, uh, which is which is an, a, a, an amazing feeling. Uh, the other is is I, I spent all of my life believing that my destiny, my destiny, was to be either a filmmaker, an actor, or an actor filmmaker. You know, one of the combinations. This is what I was meant to be. Yeah. Right. You know, like so many of us, this is what I'm. What I have come to discover and gladly and happily accept is that being an actor is what I do. What I was always meant to be was a father. Ah. Uh, I, I, I love being a father. I love being a father. Um, well, clearly, clearly you are a very good father. Um, and I just want to I want to bring something up else uh, something else up about Connor and what he's doing and one of the reasons I think he's having success and even poking his little hand in there and uh, he enjoys this yeah he's having yeah. fun and this is this is the power of saying no you know this is this is why there are, there are there are producers and people that I say, no, I'm sorry, he's, he's not gonna read for that. Yeah. He can't do that. Because I know if he works as much as everybody wants him to, he will get burned out. You will overwork out. him, yeah. He will get, yeah, he will get burned out. And, and I don't want that to happen. I want him to enjoy this for as long as he's going to enjoy this, you know? And, and I'm, I'm hoping, my, my personal hope is, but it'll be up to him, my personal hope is, is that when he reaches that age where he's getting, you know, closer to closer to 18 and suddenly he's not working anymore because producers are all hiring 18 look youngers because that's what they do. Right. Yeah. And so it's that period where most child actors fall off the radar and forever. I'm hoping that what he will do is follow in the footsteps of, you know, Jodie Foster, Roddy McDowell, uh, you know, all of these actors. Because, because who, they don't all. They yeah, don't they all don't fall all. off. They don't all. But one of the main common denominators of, of most child actors who make the transition to adults is that when they hit that period, they rededicate themselves to the craft. They go back to acting school, back to acting classes. And, and, you know, because there's so much when there are kids that it's just pure instinct to pure pretend we get older, we take on these responsibilities and we kind of lose a lot of that just simply just playing pretend. And so the craft becomes so much more important at that point. Well, you know what, the, uh, to hitchhike off of what you're saying, sure. I, I think it is the actors who do love it and want to keep doing it and do the work. Mm -hmm. I, I think there are a lot of child actors who it came easy. Uh, they worked. They made a lot of money. Uh, maybe they didn't like it that much, and maybe they thought it was just going to keep coming. But you constantly have to rededicate yourself to your craft. The world keeps changing, so how things work changes a little bit. I, I think about the technology that we have seen change over the years. And you can go, oh, God, it was work great the way we used to do it. Why don't we still do it that way? When you come with that attitude, yeah. uh, pretty soon the world's passing you by. Yeah, the other side of it too is, um, and, and I, I, I hate to say this, but it's true. Uh, some of these kids that I've seen, um, none of them working with Connor, thankfully, but some of the kids that I've seen, particularly when I've gone to some cons, you know, there was, there was one in particular I met at Dragon Con, I mean, not Dragon Con, at San Diego Comic Con, um, that are just spoiled brats. And I thought, these are the ones who aren't going to go back to crap. These are the ones who think it's going to keep coming. These are the ones. And I said, this is, I'm not going to let this happen to Connor. I'm going to keep him humble. He's, you know, he will always, he's always reminded that what he's, what he, the success he's experiencing right now, this is not typical. This is something not to take for granted at all. Be thankful for it. 
you know, um, and, and that there's work behind it, uh, you know, because I, 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 again, at San Diego Comic Con, I have seen the opposite. I, 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 I met one teenager who was just a monster, and <laughs> and and I thought, I'm never gonna forget you, yeah. because Connor's never going to be you, <laughs> you know. Uh, got a and, got a comment here from Jay Horace Black. Sure. Magical moments, wonderful relationship you have with your son. Seeing the joy, love of being a dad. Connor's enjoying himself. Very evident. Nice to see he's allowed to be a kid. Yeah, and that's yeah. and that's huge. That's that's really really huge. That you know, um, we we want to make sure. I mean, it's just. There is a casting director, I won't say who it is, who really loved Connor on, on a session, one one session, who looked at me and said, now you are going to homeschool him, right? And I said, no, no. And and I could see the, okay, look on their eye, you know, and it was like, no, I'm, I'm not gonna take him away from the socialization. I, I want him to have normal friends. I want him to have, you know, uh, I, I, he's, he's not going to, you know, be cabin fevered here. Then the pandemic. No, well, the pandemic hit, yes. Yeah, so. you know. But, the, 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 but the, the point was, it was like, I wanted him to have as normal a life as possible. I was not going to uh, skimp on his education. Because if he decides, you know, I don't want to be an actor anymore, he's going to need a, a great education. Yeah. You know, so it was like, so that kind of, you know, but he'll be a great star and he's got to be available for everything when it happens. And so we're going to homeschool. It's like, not my kid. If he's going to miss some opportunities because he's in a public school, then that's just how it goes. Yeah, and life you know? is long and he has a lifetime to do this. Listen, I know you teach. How can people get in touch with you? I do. Well, um, I can be reached through uh, Ye Olde website, uh, uh, dinoandrade.com. Um, I can also uh, be reached through, you know, Facebook, Instagram, and so on. But direct messages through DinoAndRoddy.com. I have uh, my assistant, Cricket, who books all of my students and handles all of that because uh, on top of being a dad and uh, and having a voice career and his voice career and his other side of since I also have ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. So, so yeah, it's like so. Yes, I do have someone who handles all those things for me because otherwise, I'd be a basket case, and I still make mistakes. I still make mistakes. There's, there's some of us who love you, who still think no matter what, you're a basket case. Yeah, yeah, it's true, and and you know, and, and in fact, one of the valuable lessons that I learned from Harvey Kalmanson was, when you make a mistake, you be a professional about it. So you know. Uh, I, 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 Connor actually missed a session because of a, uh, I, I, it was something that he hadn't done throughout the entire summer and summer was over. And so I had alarms that I had set before the summer and I didn't set those alarms and he missed that first session. And I just, hey, my bad, I did it, not making excuses, not blaming anybody else, but you know, but me, I own it, and so on. And it was just, you know, you just you just have to. So I, I, I tell people, a lot of times professionalism isn't just doing everything right the first time. Because to me, a lot of that isn't as much professionalism as it is common sense. Professionalism a lot of times comes in on what you do when being human comes in and you goof up. Yeah. And so the number one rule for me is own it. Don't make excuses. Don't blame somebody else. You know. Oh, you need to go uh, into I mean, politics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I wouldn't be welcome there. <laughs> I, I, I question too many things. I question way too many. Things. By the way, you know, I just put uh, dinoandrade.com. If people are trying to go. reach you, uh, there it is. Somebody had made a, a request, and I'm glad I was able to do that. Uh, just a, a couple more. Uh, questions here from some sure, people. Please, please. Um, Jeremy Adams, I wouldn't train with someone who wasn't a basket case. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And uh oh, that's, that's Lonnie Manella. Oh, Lonnie. I love Lonnie. I love Lonnie. I had the honor of being directed by Lonnie on, for Star Trek Online. Me for too. Dungeons and Dragons Never Winter. And 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 very, very recently on the Killer Clowns from Outer Space game that's coming out soon, which she sent me like videos and stuff for me to post, and I haven't done it yet because again, I'm a full time dad and a full time the kid, and that this, and we're just yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and, 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 and I, will, I'm, I will, Lonnie, I will, I love you, Lonnie. Uh, I'm so just gonna kidding. tell this one story when getting you to get me the information and pictures and whatnot uh, that I wanted for this. Uh, it, well, one, we had to cancel last week because not only was your voice out, so was mine from was too much stuff. And, and so we we're able to get together this week and it's, oh yeah, send me these pictures and get me, let me get the bio and, and whatnot. And you sent the pictures and then, you, the pictures. And then you, the, the note came, I, I, I'll get you the bio in a little bit, but I got to help Connor with his homework. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I sent you the pictures. Then I was putting the bios together, and that's when Connor came in with his laptop going, Dad, I need help with my homework. Well, be be <laughs> glad you can help him with his homework. Yeah. There, they may, there may come a time when uh, you're looking at his math homework and going, uh, 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 Thank God it wasn't math. <laughs> Another uh, couple of quick things. Great session, guys. I love Connor's hand puppets in the window behind you there. Uh and <laughs> and, and uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Oh, what's your question? Now, because you're not near the mic, son. Um, uh, if you go to the Dino and Dreddy dot com, um, if you see any art there, like little animations of art, that's made by our friend Cricket, by the yes. way. Yes, yes, Cricket did all the art on on the web. In fact, Cricket built the website. Yeah. Uh, uh, we would be lost Wednesday. without our Cricket. We yeah. would be well, lost. Well, without God, our God bless Cricket. Uh, one thing here from Jeremy Adams. How during dry spells of performing do you keep the biz from turning into a right slog and burn, uh, from turning into a, a right slog and burning out? Mm. Well, um, a couple of things. One is uh, I, I I don't tell myself that I am my job. You know uh, that, that 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 oh hello cat. Uh, a great deal of of what I said about. Um, about having a passionate love for film, particularly sci-fi, horror, fantasy, and so on. Uh, I go and, you know, I watch a lot of movies. I, I have that theater I dreamt of when I was a kid. The, you know, it, it's it's a giant 70 inch screen with full surround and a, a, a 65 terabyte uh, a, a Plex server that I've put, you know, all my DVDs and Blu-rays and everything into and, and it's just, I, I, I lose myself in another world, you know, to, to kind of recharge the artistic batteries and so on. And then the other thing was was one of the most valuable lessons I ever learned from Bob Bergen, who, uh, who is a god, I guess you didn't know that, um, was, was the lesson that you have to take joy, as much joy in doing your auditions as you do from doing your jobs. You know, you can't just say, I'm really having fun when I'm working but the auditions are just, it's like, no, I have to get in that booth when I've got an audition in front of me and have fun doing that audition. Have the same fun yeah. doing the audition as you would on the exactly. job. Exactly, you have to get the same joy out of it because you're still performing, you're still acting, you're still doing something that, that other people dream of, you know, and I'm doing it. You know, I had, I had a bunch of auditions that came in and really it's, it's not a humble brag it really isn't and because of connor and this homework and everything i didn't get to them till quite late and so i was up very late working on them and i'm thinking i'm not going to get any sleep tomorrow but you know what i'm doing these cool things and bob's words came back to me right and so that's a big part of it is just understanding that i need to be taking joy at every step of it i have always said that when you get paid for a job, that money that you're making is paying for all that downtime. It is paying for those auditions, paying for all of that. Not for the job itself, because that you would do for pure joy. Absolutely. Because that's what we love doing, right? Absolutely, absolutely. We, we, we do it for free, but don't tell anybody. 
Don't tell anybody. Because <laughs> money is a thing. But those other things do need to get paid for. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Hey, listen, Dino, thank you so much. Uh, this has been a joy. One of my great joys is doing this and being able to sit around and talk with friends of mine. And, I mean, you and I know each other. Sometimes it's somebody that I really don't know that well, but I know of. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's still always We've gone out to dinner a few times. Yeah, you know? absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and, that, and we're going and to do it again. Yeah, and that's actually kind of rare because, you know, there are people out there who are like, you know, hey, can we do dinner? And they're like, oh, God, please don't let it be somebody who wants to pick my brain about the industry. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's like, no, no, we just. I, I, know, I, I, I haven't done one of those since, I think, well before the pandemic. But I, I used to go, no, well, it's, and it's never dinner. I'll go to lunch and you buy. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know yeah. when those are, and usually people are pretty good about it they'll say hey listen can i can i buy you a meal and tell me some things and very often there are people just starting out and they want that general information happy to yeah. do it uh but yeah every now and then you get that person that that you know six yeah. months I, later I have a week, a call every week. Uh, Can I take you out to dinner again or take you out to lunch again? Uh, we can get burgers this time. Yeah, yeah. And Con Connor, Connor is my great excuse in that area because everybody knows it's real. He has to go to school. He has homework. He has auditions. He has jobs. And I have jobs. And I have, I have no time. Yeah, you have no I have time. No time. I hear you. I have no time. Well, listen, I'm gonna let you get back to it because I got dinner waiting on me upstairs, and I'm gonna go there up go. and eat. And but. Dino Dave, and, and Connor, if you can hear this, <laughs> this applause is for you as well. Oh, there he is. Thank you so much, my friend. And let's get together sometime Absolutely. soon. And we'll bring Connor so we'll be babysitters. That would be great. We could, uh, He would love that. He would absolutely love that. And we will try desperately, you and I, to get a word in. Yeah. Yeah. There With you him. go. Yeah. All right. See you soon, my friend. Take care. Thank you. It's been an honor. All right. Connor and Dina. Oh, see, I'm supposed to say Dino and Connor. See, it's already happened. Uh, <laughs> Dino and Connor Andrade, uh, my guest this evening. Wow, what a pleasure. Uh, Dino, you just left me with a smile. Connor, you put a smile on my heart. Anyway, this and all the Ask Dave Fenoy Anythings live on my YouTube channel, Ask Dave Fenoy, or Dave Fenoy VoiceOver Training. And uh, if you're interested in voice lessons or just to keep up with what I'm doing, DaveFenoy.com, you can sign up. And I'll look forward to seeing you next Wednesday for another Ask Dave Fenoy Anything. And in the meantime and in between time, book something. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>